in the last section we studied about uh, small scale fading uh, so now we are going to discuss about the parameters of mobile multipath channel okay um in the last section we have studied about what small scale fading what are the factors that influence small scale fading now what are the parameters that are used in mobile multipath channel that we are going to study so in the parameters of mobile multipath uh, channel uh, the one term that is main important is power delay profit okay so uh, in the parameters of mobile multipath channel we are going to see about various parameter called uh, time dispersion parameter coherence bandwidth okay uh, doppler spread uh, and all okay so for for all these parameters the important thing we have to note is power delay profile okay it is mainly used to find the parameters of mobile multipath channel okay so how this uh, power delay profile is found okay the power delay profile is found by uh, averaging the instantaneous power delay profile measurement over a local area in order to determine an average small scale power delay profile okay that is just the averaging of the instantaneous power delay so uh, going to this the first one is the time dispersion parameter okay the time dispersion parameter so we know if we uh, when we are transmitting a signal uh, in the communication link there will be a transmitter and after the transmitter there will be a channel and then goes to the receiver side right so in between the uh, transmitter and receiver there is a channel right so there will be an impulse response in the channel so the baseband impulse response of the channel can be represented by the sum of a uh, series of delayed phase shift replicas of the transmitted signal we know from the transmitter multiple signals are transmitting at a time uh, so we are just uh, finding the vector sum of the series of delayed phase shift replicas of the transmitted signal that is shifted versions of the uh, transmitted signal okay sum of shifted versions of the transmitted signal so it is denoted as that is the impulse response h of t comma tau is equal to sigma i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 a i of t comma tau expression of j theta i uh, t comma tau del of t minus tau i of t okay this is the impulse response of the channel it is all normally denoted as h of t comma tau okay here a i of t comma tau what is a i of t comma tau that is the real amplitude value okay then tau i of t that is the excess delay and the uh, um theta i of t comma tau that is the phase shift of the single multipath component within the ith delay or okay, okay we are just considering the ith delay and in that we are a of t comma tau is the amplitude tau i of t is the excess delay theta i of t comma tau is the phase shift okay so for small scale channel modeling the power delay profile gives the average power at the channel output at the function of as a function of time delay okay so if you are considering small scale channel modeling this power delay profile just gives the average power at the channel output as the function of the time delay so it just depend if you are considering small scale channel modeling the power delay profile just depends on the time delay okay so the average power at the channel output just depends on the uh, it is a function of the time delay it is obtained by taking the spatial average of uh, what impulse response okay so this uh, power delay profile of the small scale modeling channel can be obtained by taking the spatial average of 
modulus of h of t comma tau the whole square over a local area. This power delay profile provides an estimate of the average multipath power as a function of relative delay tau. Okay. So, this we know we are just using the power delay profile in this uh, parameters of mobile multipath channel, right? So, it provides an estimate of the average multipath power. Okay, there will be various signals, that is, there will be multipath signals. Each signal has its own power and all. So, we are just calculating the average multipath power as a function of delay tau. The power delay profile at time tau naught for a for, uh, probing pulse P of T at the channel inputters that is the power delay profile at time T naught. P of tau naught is equal to modulus of R of T naught the whole square that is equal to sigma K naught into uh, K naught to N minus 1 A K square tau naught. Okay. So here in this the several small scale multipath channel parameters such as mean so here in this uh, time dispersion parameter we are just going to see about various delay what are the types of delay mean excess delay rms delay spread uh, excess delay spread etc we are going to study which defines the channel time dispersion property property okay these all can be obtained from power delay profit okay so here the mean excess delay is denoted as tau bar and the rms delay spread it is denoted by sigma tau are used to quantify the time dispersive properties of the wideband multipath channel okay this mainly used to find the time dispersive property of the channel okay so in the first one is the mean excess delay uh, so we are now we are calculating the power delay profile right so the mean excess delay it is the first moment of the power delay profile so and it is defined as uh, tau bar is equal to okay what is tau bar mean excess delay okay that is equal to sigma k a k square tau k by sigma k a k square okay so that is equal to sigma k into p of tau k uh, into tau k divided by sigma k into p of tau k that is a k square we can represent it as p of tau k then this is the mean excess delay then root mean square delay okay what is root mean square delay it is the square root of the second central moment of the power delay profile so mean excess delay it is the first moment of the power delay profile then root mean <coughs> root mean square delay it is the square root of the second central moment of the power delay profile okay so it is denoted as sigma tau that is equal to square root of tau square bar by minus tau bar the whole square that is mean value so tau square bar is equal to sigma k a k square tau k square by sigma k a k square okay so uh, this we can represent it as a k we can write it as p of tau k a k square is p of tau k so sigma k p of tau k into tau k square by sigma k into p of tau k so p of tau is the power level ok absolute power level uh, then these delays are measured relative to the first detectable signal arriving at the receiver at time at tau naught is equal to 0 we know multiple signals are uh, uh, arriving so after the first uh, we know uh, the first signal arrives at the fastest time right so after that whatever signals is coming that is the delayed signal so the delays are measured comparing to the first detected signal arriving at the receiver at tau naught is equal to zero 
so this is the road mean square delay mean excess delay road mean square delay then uh, we are going to see maximum excess delay okay it is defined to be the time delay during which multiple energy falls to x db below the maximum okay it is also multiple maximum and excess delay it is also a time delay okay when the multipath energy falls to x db below the maximum value so this maximum excess delay we can represent it as tau x minus tau naught what about tau x and tau naught tau x is the maximum delay at which a multipath component is within the x db of strongest arriving multipath signal and tau naught is the first arriving signal okay so this maximum excess delay is just the comparison between the first signal and the signal where we get the maximum um, delay element okay when it falls below the x db so uh, it should be noted that the power delay profile and magnitude frequency response of the mobile radio channel are related through the Fourier transform. This will be the power delay profile and the magnitude frequency response of the channel are related through Fourier transform. It is therefore possible to obtain the equivalent description on the channel in frequency domain using its frequency response character. Here the RMS delay spread. RMS delay spread is equal to 1 by co coherence bandwidth that we will study. Okay. Then second one is the coherence bandwidth. Co what is coherence bandwidth? It is defined as the relation. Uh, it is a defined relation derived from the RMS delay spread. Okay. Okay. So this coherence bandwidth it is the statistical measure of range of frequency over which the channel can be considered fast okay flat okay so this is the definition for the coherence bandwidth what is bandwidth it is a range of frequency okay so this coherence bandwidth it is also a range of frequencies at which we can we have to consider the channel is flat that is uh, this channel will at that time this channel will pass all the spectral components with approximately equal gain and linear phase Okay, this is the coherence bandwidth. What is coherence bandwidth? It is the range of frequency. Okay, the coherence bandwidth is the range of frequency over which two frequency components have a strong potential for amplitude correlation Okay so the same uh, range of frequencies are there then we are going to form the amplitude correlation over which the two frequency component have a strong potential for amplitude correlation it is defined as the bandwidth over which the frequency correlation function is above 0 0.9 okay so at this condition the coherence bandwidth bg is approximately equal to 1 by 50 sigma tau okay if the frequency correlation is above 0 0.5 then we can represent bg is approximately equal to 1 by 5 sigma tau so the exact relation between bg and rms delay spread is a function of special channel impulse response and the applied signal so bz is equal to 1 by tm what is tm it is the multipath delay spread then doppler spread okay so in the coherence bandwidth we already discussed next uh, the topic is doppler spread okay this Doppler spread coherence time and the Doppler spread just describes the time varying nature of the channel. Okay, this uh, coherence uh, time and Doppler spread it just describes the time varying nature of a channel in a small scale region. Okay, it is just uh, the Doppler spread is a measure of spectral broadening caused by the time rate of change of mobile. 
okay mobile radio channel okay so it is the measure of spectral bonding what is what cause the spectral bonding because of the frequency the spectral bonding is happen so it is the measure of spectral bonding caused by the time rate of change of mobile radio channel that is it is defined as the range of frequencies over which the required doppler spread spectrum is essentially non zero so it is also this doppler spread is also a set of frequencies over which the received spectrum is essentially non zero when a pure sinusoidal turn of frequency fc is transmitted the received signal spring, uh, spectrum called the doppler spectrum which will have components in the range of fc minus fd to fc plus fd fd is the doppler shift okay so when a pure frequency is transmitted the received signal spectrum uh, which uh, which will have the components so at this uh, point the signals will be in the range of the frequency fc minus fd to fc plus fd what about fd that is the doppler shift so the amount of spectral broadening depends on the relative velocity of the mobile and the angle theta between the direction of mobile uh, direction of motion of mobile and the direction of arrival of the scattered work okay so the due to this we can able to calculate the amount of spectral broadening okay it just depends on the velocity of mobile angle theta between the direction of motion of mobile and the direction of arrival arrival of the scattered work next the coherence time okay it is just the it is the time duration over which the two receive signal have a strong potential for amplitude correlation so uh, when the two receive signals will be there if it have a strong potential for amplitude correlation we can say it is coherence time so it is used to characterize the time varying nature of the frequency dispersiveness of the channel in time domain okay if the reciprocal bandwidth of the baseband signal is greater than the coherence time of the channel the channel will change during the transmission of baseband message causing distortion of the receiver that is if the uh, bandwidth reciprocal or reciprocal bandwidth of the baseband signal is greater when co comparing to the coherence time then the channel will change during the transmission of baseband uh, message causing distortion at the receiver so if tc is the time over which the correlation function is above 0.5 this is the case we are just considering so the coherence time tc is equal to 9 by uh, 16 pi f m so when we consider the modern digital communication this tc is equal to square root of 9 by 16 pi f square m that is equal to 0.423 by f m okay this is the parameters of mobile multipath channel just go through it whatever doubts you have you can ask me directly okay after watching this video you have to write the notes of the same and you have to submit it okay thank you dear students